I'd like for you to share with us your name, any affiliation that you may have, and you are welcome in this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Al Austin, and um, I'm from Greenville, North Carolina. All right. Um, I don't really have a church affiliation, but I do. I am. I, I am saved man. All right. And I, uh, you know, I have Jesus in my life and looking every day to get closer and to learn more of Him. And it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I've, I've, I've been here before. I've, mm -hmm. I've done some work here. Amen. It was more work here before. Okay. But, it, but it's actually good to be here and be in service. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And I say to you, you're in the right place. We are a Bible teaching and believing in teaching church. And we believe in teaching and preaching the Word of God. Praise him. Praise God. Lift him I, I up the name you. of Jesus. Thank you. That's what I need. All right. All right. And he is a singer. Yes, I am. And we need monsters here, musicians. Okay. All right. All Praise right. God. <coughs> remember, the key word I'm hearing today is remember. Remember. All right. Yes, sir. Remember us. I greet you in the precious name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And it is indeed a great lesson and privilege to stand in the sacred place again. And I will also, in my prayer, lift up our pastor, the Reverend Reynard Griffin, who may not be on the internet today. And is recuperating from surgery. God is good and we do he has restored and it is renewing him daily. Uh, I say to the young people today, young people, pay attention to this word. This is a teaching message about history. History of people who others have oppressed, and of course us, but we want to take you on a journey. You may not learn some of these things in the current school system, but I want you to hear this so you will know some things that you may not be taught, and I pray that your parents will teach you at home. I thank Brother and Sister Rose and Brother Tap for all your assistance. I could not do what I do without all of you. And God is so good. He always sends someone to undergird a shepherd, to lift him or her up in the time of need. And as I stand in the gap for my pastor, our pastor, all of you know the health issues I've had. But I've told God in sickness and in health, I will always be ready and available as long as I can move and speak to proclaim the good news. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we come to you now in the heart of spirit in the precious name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. God, I pray now that you loosen this stumbling tongue. I pray, oh God, that you energize this feeble body. I pray, oh God, that the listeners will be in tune to this word from you, from the scriptures, Old and New Testament. And I pray, God, for our pastor and the first lady. I pray for all that are healed and afflicted. God, I pray not only for this ministry, but for every household of faith. And I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. And let the people of God say amen. 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 And as I said to you this morning, this message is a teaching message. And I will share with you from the Old Testament first, from the book of 
Zachariah, and this is where I'll start. Because sometimes we pay attention to what's going on now, but I want you to understand why and what and how we shall overcome mm -hmm. according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the word of the Lord came to Zechariah. This is what the Lord Almighty said. A minister true justice show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. Do not let my evil against each other. But they refused to pay attention. Stubbornly, they turned their backs and covered their ears. They made their hearts hard as flint and would not listen to the law or to the words that the Lord Almighty had sent by his spirit through the earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. When I called, they did not listen. They called, I would not listen, says the Lord Almighty. I scattered them with a whirlwind among the nations where they were strangers. The land they left behind was so desolate that no one traveled through it. This is how they made the pleasant land desolate. And God is, <clears throat> and this is the key verse. This is what the Lord Almighty said, a minister of true justice, show mercy and compassion to one another, amen. And uh, I want to say this morning also, that as we listen, I pray that you will receive this word from the Lord, because it is a word straight from the throne room. Amen. And this word is entitled God's Promise, this message, God's Promise for Justice. Zechariah 7, 9 through 13. And there are several focus statements in these verses. And with the introduction, I would say in every age, Christians ponder their mission in the world. Is a passionate concern for justice part of being a follower of Jesus? Or is seeking justice something Christians may choose to do or not to do? When we examine the scriptures, we find out how central justice is to the life of the Christian. Uh -huh. There's no concept in the Old Testament so center of significance for all relationships of human life, of the Christian and for others, if they receive God's word. The people of the Old Testament were in relationship with God because of the covenant, the covenant that existed between God and Israel. As a member of this covenant community, each person was in relationship with each other. And that's what God desires now, including poor and needy people, one's family, and even strangers and aliens. Amen. Out of these relationships arose responsibilities and demands. We all have responsibility in any relationship. So it remains true for us in our society today. It means that we as Christians and as people of God, for what God has entrusted to us, we must remain true to it and faithful. Amen. I love the series we're studying in our Bible study on faith and trust. That's also essential. The justice of God was vividly portrayed in God's concern for the Israelite people 
when they were in Egypt. In the whole, in the whole of bondage and slavery, they cried out to God, Yahweh for help, according to Exodus 2, 30, 23 through 25. Yahweh called Moses to deliver the Israelite people from slavery. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmakers. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come and I have come to defend them, to deliver them from the Egyptians. Exodus 3, 7 and 8. They must free, be free from the oppressed and do justice towards others. So it remains true for people today. All of us who have been in bondage, and African Americans certainly have. There are many other groups of people who have been in bondage. But God is saying to us today that we will receive justice. Remember that. Concern for the oppressed and the poor was at the core of the Israelites' calling. This concern was rooted only in the covenant, but more importantly, in the very nature of Yahweh, our Lord. At that time, the Israelites referred to God as Yahweh. Some, is, some of the Jewish people still refer to him as Yahweh today. But he's our Lord, all the people, his whole creation, and we should belong to him. It's our Lord who is the defender of the oppressed, the one who liberates the captives, who feeds hungry people. When we do it, we do it because of our Lord's message to us, because of his guidance, because of his provisions that he provides for us. But it is him that is the one who does it. The Lord gave the prophets this message throughout history's Israel, throughout Israel's history. He gave them that message continually. The prophets remained faithful to the covenant. Their primary mission was to lead the people back to the path of righteousness. And this is a mission for believers today, all believers. Not just those who are called pastors, not only those who are called prophets, evangelists, teachers, but all people. I could go down the whole list. But the prophets were sent not only to speak Yahweh's word, but to speak on behalf of those who have no voice. And today, we need a great righteous leader. We had one. I'm thinking about the Reverend Dr. Martin King now, yeah. constantly, who will speak on behalf of the people. But that person, he or she, must be righteous themselves. Amen. Not greedy, not looking for uh, popularity, not looking for material gain, not looking to conquer, but just to speak on behalf of those who have no voice speak amen. what god is saying amen. i am reminded today of that voice of the late dr martin luther king when he says give me justice give me liberty and justice speaking for the vision of justice and peace for all god's people that's what he was doing he was speaking out for liberty and justice. And it seems sometimes people have forgotten about it today. Yeah. Tomorrow we will revisit it, but we must have it in our hearts and we must yeah. speak every chance we get the words that he left with us. You see, this vision of peace is what is so important. We must catch the vision and hold on to it and then engage in it. 
But prayer would justice lead us in this vision of peace, you might ask. What is the goal towards which the prophets call the people of God? What is that goal? In doing justice, we come to know God better. Did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? We alluded to our own fathers today. And I believe they were all just and righteous fathers. Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well. Is it not to show me, says the Lord, Jeremiah 22, verse 15, in knowing, in growing, in addition to knowing God better, doing justice leads to shalom, peace. It will lead to your peace. In the peace, if chaos is going on all around me, around you, and sometimes you feel uh, just unsettled, trust me, just have your little talk with Jesus, and that inner peace will be there for you instantly. Uh, where there is justice, now let me read the rest for a minute. Then justice will dwell in the willingness and the righteousness abide in the fruitful field. That is God's promise. The effect of righteousness will be peace. The result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. Those are the results of the effect of peace. Isaiah 32. 16 through 17. The opposite is also true. Where is oppression and injustice? There can be no shalom, peace. Trust me. Sometimes we wonder why there's no peace. But do you not know that not only our nation, but many other nations are dealing with oppression and injustice? even Amen. as I speak now. Amen. And there are those Amen. who will not speak out and call it what it is. Amen. God is calling us to experience it. It is certainly more than the absence of war and violence. Amen. It's that warring with the end. It's that warring that keeps us unsettled day by day. It's that warring that seems to overcome us even when we are fighting the good fight of faith. It involves all the conditions of life that makes for wholeness and harmony. Are you listening, young people? Shalom peace is the goal of God's work as deliverer and liberator. God's purpose in the world is to restore peace wherever it has been broken. That's his purpose. And remember that now. He's the restorer of the beach. Glory to God. In our hearts, homes, communities, our places of worship, and the nations, he is the restorer. God will for all his shalom, his peace, and the community of faith is to do God's will concerning mercy, justice, peace, and love. We examine those things during uh, uh, the Advent season. Hope was one of them, but mercy is one too because God is the God of mercy. When we turn now to the New Testament, we find these same Things. John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Christ's ministry, exhorted his hearers, his hearers to change their lives. When the crowd asked him what to do, John replied in clear and certain terms, whosoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And there are people that won't do that. Have a closet full of coats. 
can't wear them, old, outdated, but still won't share them with anyone. We thank God for the word, and whosoever has food must do likewise. Luke 3, 11. The work of justice and peace, Jesus' ministry. Jesus' ministry characterized his own, Jesus characterized his own earthly ministry by service to the poor, the outcasts, and the downtrodden. Early in his public ministry, mm -hmm. Jesus entered the synagogue and read from the prophet Isaiah's story to destroy his next. This is what he read. The spirit of the Lord is upon me mm -hmm. because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recover sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of God's faith. And that's Luke 4, 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, Luke presents us with Jesus at the beginning of his public ministry. Jesus identified himself with the servant of the Lord and saw himself as a part of the great prophetic tradition of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, and Amos and some others. Mm -hmm. Jesus announced the coming of God's reign. He announced that, but not only did he announce its coming in the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you for the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. He also embodied God's reign. In his life, what he said and in his deeds, we see what God's reign is about. In his death and resurrection, God's reign is inaugurated in a new and definitive way. With Jesus, we have the fullness of shalom and peace. Jesus is our path to justice and peace. In him, we know and have the justice and peace of God. In your ways, covenant has been renewed. In Jesus, I'm going to say it again, and the left eye gives me some issues. In Jesus, Yahweh's covenant has been renewed, and we are called to be agents of God's shalom in the world. Mm -hmm. Not one, but all of us doing good, being good, uh, being righteous, being honest, being faithful, being true to the one and true God. Hallelujah. Jesus reminds us that Paul reminds us that Jesus, though he was rich, for our sakes he became poor, that by his poverty we might become rich. Second Corinthians, Corinthians 8 and 9. I thank you, Jesus, for your unfailing love to commend it. I thank you for all you have done. I thank you how you enter into this word as an humble servant. I thank you, Jesus, how you yield in submission to your father, even when you were 12 years old, and waited to start your earthly ministry at the age of 30. I thank you, Jesus, for your submission. I thank you for your obedience. I thank you for how you taught the disciples, and you told them to remember to teach others to lead God and direct them by what they have been taught. I thank you, Jesus, how you remember the prophets and how you always alluded to what they had revealed to the people of that time by the voice of God. You see, my brothers and sisters, here we are in this land of plenty. And yet there are so many among us that have not the necessary things, food, clothing, 
and shelter. We have many churches, and there are so many of us that are not getting the pure word of God. Many people, Amen. I would say, no. They are getting excitement. They are getting all the music. The actress, like a band going on in the church. All the things that they are saying out of the flesh. And I'm not complaining. I'm not pointing a finger at anyone. But I've told everyone that know me. When God called me into this ministry, I was very sure. I said no many a time. But when he wrestled with me, oh yes, like Jacob had to wrestle with that angel, I got in place. And I promised God I would preach the word in season. And I would say, I will preach it to whosoever Amen. will. I will stand flat footed and call out wrong and lift up the name of Jesus. I think Hallelujah. tomorrow, as we hear, remember, remember, those who are attending those uh, celebrations in honor of our great earthly leader, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., remember that he was a voice crying out in the wilderness. We need other voices of his stature and nature. There are others, Amen. but we need a leader to lead our people. Moses led his people out of the wilderness and out of the desert. And Moses obeyed God and did everything that God told him to do. Because when they were departing from Egypt, and I'm just left with us to talk. Oh, he told him that if you will call your people to gather mm -hmm. in the place, in their homes. And then when you kill that calf, you can take the blood on every door place and any open that you can. Because when you see the blood, uh, death will pass you over. Because mm -hmm. he had promised Pharaoh, who was opposing him and holding the people, that you're going to let my people go. So our cry ought to be, let my people go. We're not going to stand and take it all. And we have the blood of Jesus covering us. Young people, I'm speaking to you right now. When you're out there in those mean streets, you need to have read the word about the covering of God. You need to have come in obedience to your family, to your mother, to your significant others in your family, to your teachers in school. And when you're in obedience, we're pleading the blood of Jesus over your spirit, your souls, and your body. So remember that. I thank you for being here today. And I hope you have heard something that have inspired you. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. And also, as I am. In that invitation, I will take it further and, and expand two more. If there are anyone in the listening audience here and also on the internet, if you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sin, if you want to receive the peace of God that Jesus came to reveal and that the Holy Spirit is here to give us in spite of. If you don't know, all you have to do is just humble yourself, be obedient and cry out, Lord, have mercy on me. I want to receive the salvation, the peace, the love, and the joy I cannot have apart from you. So I extend this invitation to anyone and we do have the contact information up there for you to see. And as the tab showed that contact information, I'm going to go ahead and extend this second one. If there's anyone here who needs God's touch upon your body, your mind and spirit, if you want God to lift you up out of misery, for health reason, for mind, of other kinds of challenges, mm -hmm. we're here to pray with you. I extend an invitation at this time to church discipleship. A lot of ones say to become a member. The word of God says to become a disciple of Christ. And it does not mean the church called it. It means to become 
a part of a member of the body of God. So if you're here and you leave church home, you can go where you want it, with you. Please come. You're here. And Brother Terry will look at that information now if you have it. It'll, it'll come up on the end. prepared to give what you have. So we will now share our gifts as Brother Rose come to receive them. The changes in my face. Here we have a um, five gallon jug and we put change money whatsoever in it. And uh, we just had a bribe for missions. And that is to do the work of mission. I think God even has a smaller church. We give faithfully and every member here, every disciple is a kind member. Because we believe in giving God what belongs to him, and that's his 10 percent, which is the tithe. And then we give extra, which is offerings and mysteries. And we are truly blessed. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs>
blessed and have a wonderful day. And thanks again to God. Thank you. Thank you.